Welcome everyone. So in this clip we would like to set the incandescence RAM so that we could also further improvise the shading section of the you know the explosion plus to improvise the overall look and feel and the behavior of the simulations. We also would like to add an external field that would be the turbulence. So first I would like to add the turbulence field. So for that you need to select the fluid container and you can go inside the field solvers and can click over the turbulence. Okay. So the turbulence field will going to make it a little bit more turbulent or you could say if we're going to add some more you can say weightage to the overall behavior of the explosion and it is added because just to you know introduce the impact of the wind or the air. How do we going to begin with the values of the turbulence field? Well I would like to set the uh, magnitude between somewhere around 18 to 20 and I don't need any attenuation so we would like to put that thing to the zero and the frequency is required to be you know some keys so in the beginning we would be having a frequency of 0.7 and let's say at frame approximately 50 or let's say 60 we would like to drop it down to 0.25 okay so in that case you know the explosion will take you know some bigger tons and I, I do have got the play blast with me so uh, at the end of this clip I would like to show you the play blast that would be the high resolutions of the fluids that has been you know taken somewhere around 175 resolutions at the base so the next thing would be to you know decide the incandescence you know this is very important you know graph so you can see that these colors are indicating the temp the values of the temperature with the most right coordinates is indicating that the temperature values are very high and you can see that the the moment it you know burst out the temperature quickly you know tries to rise upward because it's quite you know hot and now it's time to add some more you know proper color schemes to that since I also talk about the black body so our graph would also be you know based upon those kind of colors so I can you know introduce some more yellowish kind of an impact that because the shading is you know extremely extremely important section of the explosion if you do have if you do not have you know the proper shading or you could say the look and feel then you know it would be really tough to get the ex exact feel of the explosion so the overall color graph for that is not a problem and obviously we do have you know the comping packages to to further improvise all these things so not a big issue all right, so and you could also go go around with these values of the input bias, let's say 0.25. I mean, if you would like to increase that, but be also very careful that too much value will definitely going to kill your you know explosion. So that has to be really very sensitive. I will never recommend to go over the value of zero. You may could play around with the value of 0 0.25, and now see the beautiful impact of these streaks. The streaks of the fire, as you know, I was discussing with you also in the previous module. Now I would like to bring your kind attention towards the attribute of the temperature that is called as a tension. So with high tension value, you will going to expect a very nice, you know, flow of the fire. And that's pretty amazing. And I think so. We are almost done with all the things. And it's time to show you the play blast. Now you can see that in front of me. I do have got the high resolution play blast of the explosions. Here you can see that the color variations is, is a little bit more. The inclination towards the yellow is quite high, but that's not a problem. You can again, you know, certainly revisit the color scheme of the incandescence RAM and can play around with the base color which you want. Now you can see that at the bottom there is a very high impact, and due to the, you know, high buoyancy values of the temperature, it has quickly risen up with the help of the high simulation rate scale, and the way these colors are being getting mixed up is also due to the diffusion attribute of the you know temperature and in the beginning you could see that the fire is you know there's there's a lot of fire over here so the fuel the fuel the air to fuel ratio is also playing a, a lot of important role so overall it's the the collection or you may could say the synergy of the content details like the density velocity turbulence temperature and the fuel Plus also you know you need to be very careful regarding the animated values of your fluid ammeter because the attribute you know density pressure threshold or you could say the sorry the temperature pressure threshold is totally based upon the rate of the you know density per voxels per 
you can say second so if you would like to add or if you feel like to you know increase the values of the density you also need to work with respect to the temperature with respect to the heat as well as the fuel so all these things are very very important while constructing uh, impactful or you may could say a good level of explosions all right so I'd like to close that thing and I hope so that now you are done with your process and don't just forget to you know increase the resolution value of the base resolution from 100 to maybe 200 or I should say 175 and before you make that decision I always you know suggest you that with value of 100 just take a play blast of 60 to 75 frames try to get the basics of the explosions that whether it's you know uh, giving you the appropriate results as per your expectations or not try to tweak down certain attributes which you feel you need to do according to your own artistic or aesthetic decisions and then once you're satisfied with the overall behavior of the fluids then try to appraise it just do not you know start begin with the very high resolutions otherwise you would be end up with lots of frustrations because you know these things are exceptionally you know extremely computationally heavy so you need to pay a lot of attention before you are you know on your way to create some fluid dynamic stuff especially when it comes to the explosion because you can see over here that the base resolution 100 and it was you know stop uh, for frame 15 I guess this has been you know kept at disable evaluation so because of that it's showing you the wrong figures of the frames it was hardly the reaction of frame 10 or maximum I should say 15 within 15 frame it has you know covered the resolutions of 92 so when it will gonna reach the value of 100 you may could you know simply think over that the resolutions of the X and the Z will going to land up somewhere around 360 and the Y1 will be somewhere around 400 plus value so that's you know quite a high resolution kind of a stuff so for that reason you are always required to move first with the base resolution keeping low value of the base resolution and then try to increase it step by step and I also like to bring your kind attention towards the auto resize which is you know playing a lot of important roles when it comes to the high impact explosions plus as you know that we are already utilizing the simulation rate scale that's you know quite a high value and we also using the sub steps 5 but despite of the fact we do have you know these two things synchronized to each other like we do have a higher simulation rate scale so there might be chances of fluids not to evaluate frames properly but we have you know figured it out with the help of the sub steps but now another great problem is that if we do not going to utilize the auto resize attribute then the fluid might could end up with some you know different kind of results that might not best fit when it comes to the explosions what happened as you know that if you're gonna play the timeline the well it simply means that you know if you do not have the proper space you know since you're using a very high simulation rate scale you are required to utilize the auto resize margins which simply states that for the initial values of the explosions you are giving a very high you know margin resizing to the overall fluid container so I would like to take you inside this value so from for, from frame 1 to the 30 I have also synchronized this auto resize margin with respect to the simulation rate scale so it simply means that in the beginning of the frames you have quite high rooms or you may could have a lot of space to adjust your voxels you know you could say high speed voxels and then when it comes to you know the overall settlement of the explosions and you also know that the simulation rate scale is also going to shrink to you know 0.75 so in that case we don't require a lot of you know higher margin size so what we could do in that case we can you know shrink it down to 3 that would going to save your RAM your you know processing and all of that so that's why I you know decided to take a look at that auto resize as well because that's being a very important attribute and I hope so with that thing it's quite a big lecture and I hope so that you are now complete you have completely understood the concepts of the explosions now it's time to move to the next module which would be the cache of the fluids we would like to learn the techniques and how do we going to interpret the word cache inside the fluids